Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert and special guest James Lord High Commander of the Science Cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. Hello. As always we're wearing togas, we're eating olives and today we're going to look at the Battle of Sylvia Arcia. Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been looking at the immediate aftermath of the removal of the last king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus. The arrogant and proud who ruled more like a tyrant. Yeah, and we looked at the republican system of government adopted by this fledgling state, based on the power of the senate and the consuls. But still no representation for the plebs. I did tell you They don't count. I told you it wasn't perfect. (laughs) I I had issues with this from the start. And But no sooner had Brutus been appointed consul and the Republic come into being than Superbus started pl- hatching schemes to reclaim the city. Evil schemes! I'm not, I'm not doing this if you keep doing that. <laughs> but by chance... Do you mean what, the idiots? Yeah, or by idiots. Um, the plan was exposed and the conspirators mm. arrested and executed. Including the two sons of Brutus, don't forget. Still so cross about that, the morons. Let it go, James. No. Let it go. Stop saying evil schemes. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> so now we're entering into a new phase in the story of Rome. Traditionally, this section is known as the Wars of Independence because the Tarquins try and take Rome by force. But we're not going to call it that. No, we're going to call it something else. We're going to call it Tark Wars. It's a good job we don't charge for these because we get copyrighted for that. <laughs> it's just you. So, the next few episodes will cover the various ways that um, Superbus tries to overthrow the Republic a long time ago and in a city not so far, far away. I mean, at the moment, it may as well be. Like, it may as well be. Galaxy, galaxy far, far, far away. I mean, before I actually move on with the actual historical content, was George Lucas kind of. Influenced by the Roman Republic when he was writing Star Wars. Star Wars, you mean Greeks in space? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Massively. Okay. Just thought I'd ask. So ultimately, there are three different conflicts with with surrounding cities that need to be covered, and each has got quite a different impacts on Rome. And it's kind of new hope for peace and freedom. New hope, I like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we should point out that Tark Wars is not an official term. Don't write it in an exam. Yeah, also don't write the, uh, you know, any Star Wars no. <laughs> dialogue either, I think. <laughs> but yeah, we should also point out that we didn't come up with the name. We simply stole it from the lovely Chris Carbett. I like Chris, he's good. Mm. <laughs> I like Chris. I miss Chris. I can also point out, just to clarify, don't use Star Wars references. A friend and I once dared each other to get as many train spotting quotes as we could into an exam. It didn't go well. So <laughs> don't do it. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, let's start by looking at the first instalment of the Wars of Independence, or the Tark Wars, <laughs> the Battle of Sylvia Arcia. So, the obvious cause of this first military campaign against Rome was the failure of the Tarquin conspiracy from the last episode. Or as Livy puts it, A detailed report of these matters reached Tarquin. He was not only furious at the failure of plans from which he had hoped so much, but he was filled with rage at finding the way blocked against secret plots and consequently determined upon open war. Does he learn not to write things down in future? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'll tell his, uh, you know, like, compadres to keep it down. When yeah, yeah. Just, just in their plans. You know, like your uh, evil conspiracies, just whisper. No. <laughs> whisper. So, uh, I mentioned earlier, I think last time, uh, yeah. He's got he's got no posse. How is he going to start a war? Because surely, like I know you said, like other like neighboring kingdoms took him in. This must be an embarrassment for him. Like your your your, your sleuthy plan was not so sleuthy because they spoke very loudly in yeah, public about it's it. It's not the great selling point, is it? Yeah. No. Um. You are of course right. He doesn't have a city or anything. Um. But he knows the idea of the republic will be unpopular. And that there will be a good few states around Rome or in the region that will happily see Rome fall. And we must also not underestimate the fact that he is quite devious hmm. so, um, and quite persuasive as well. So he can talk his way around 
So uh, you say you mean the Republic fall? They don't want Rome to collapse. They, no, they or... want the Republic gone because right. that's the immediate threat. Okay. So he goes on a kind of raising armies to fight Rome tour around the local area, and the first stop is the V8. Um, and it's a good choice because, you know, the V8 have, let's say, a checkered past with Rome, uh, and they've fought them before, and Tarquin knows this, and he uses this to his advantage. It's kind okay. of unfinished business. Or as Livy says... So the V8 must help him and give him resources. They must set about avenging their own wrongs also. Their legions so often cut to pieces their territory torn from them. So he's playing on their revenge. So, it? yeah, it's just pure yeah. vengeance. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So they're in the bag, he's got them boxed off. Uh, and next he visits Tarquini. Or Carnetto. Yep, the I land I of his ancestors. <laughs> uh, the town of... Well, it's not the town of his birth, but it's his named after yeah. it. Uh, and Livy goes on to tell us... The people of Tarquini were won over by the name and nationality of the exile... They were proud of having a countryman as king in Rome. So the the name is the bad thing in Rome. It's good. For it's the, good for it's them. Good for the corner. So episodes. yeah, they're looking at. Oh well, he's one of us. So we've got to help him. So that's yeah. them in the bag as well. Okay. So it wasn't too hard for him to raise two whole armies, which was nice. Okay. Seeing how bad he is at being like subversive and sly <laughs> i'm assuming that rome knew he'd raised two armies and was like getting ready for a fight yeah i mean the, it's not a surprise <laughs> no <laughs> i mean we probably just spoke about it really loudly near <laughs> rome watch out i'm gonna be there tomorrow <laughs> and yeah one positive effect of superbus's numerous wars I mean, do you remember those <laughs> yes well the 200 year one's still, still going, going on they're, really, but... they're barely started that one now surely <laughs> Still in the early, yeah, early stages. So one benefit of the numerous wars was that Rome had already got quite a substantial army. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and don't forget the census as well. Can never forget never the census. Forget the census. <laughs> no. So that also draws up people into the army. So with the organisation of the Republic, they have systems in place to get this army up and moving and ready to do stuff. So when the armies of Tarquin do enter Roman territory... Livy tells us. When they had entered the Roman territory, the consuls advanced against them. Valerius with the infantry in phalanx formation. Brutus in advance with the cavalry. Okay. I mean, it's interesting to point out here that Valerius, the kind of the junior of the two consuls, um, he takes the role of the dictator, which is the big job. Well, I was, I was going to ask, like, because we talked last time about how he... You know, you'd like a dictator, but then you'd have a master, master of horse, which is Brutus. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so they're, they're not from outside the consoles? They no, they've, they've just gone, oh, you two can do it. Oh, I assume this would be like from outside and they'd, you could do, they'd but have a, a further check and balance or something. Yeah, but that would just be more names for people to remember. And right, No one's okay. got time for that. So, um, yeah, Brutus is master of horse, so the <laughs> senior consul is in charge of the cavalry. Yeah. Um, Valerius, the more junior consul, is in charge of... The infantry. You can't be that much junior. They got rid of uh, yeah. Tarquin pretty quick. Yeah, but in terms of their fame and so on. Um, and although, but we're saying that's a bit unusual, it may also be more to do with the unfolding drama that comes up. There's because always, There's always unfolding yeah, drama. As Livy says. <laughs> Similarly, the enemy's cavalry was in front of his main body. Aaron's Tarquin, the king's son, in command. The king himself followed with the legionaries. Okay. So they're kind of equally matched. Yeah. So it's going to be. Is this? It's a scrap. It's not a squash match. No, it, it's a. It's going to be a bit of a grudge match as yeah. well. And then Livy goes on. While still at a distance, Aaron's distinguished the consul by his escort of lictors. As they drew nearer, he clearly recognised Brutus by his features, and in a rage exclaimed, "That is the man who drove us from our country! See him proudly advancing, adorned with our insignia." Ye gods, avengers of kings, aid me. Okay. So it's definitely kind of grudge match. Smack in a down. Long, yeah, <laughs> in say. amongst a battle. Yeah, he's got all. He's got time to say that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, someone, they've got a lot. They're still quite far there's away. There's someone nearby to write it down. <laughs> yeah, do you not take someone a scribe with you everywhere you go? No, sadly. No. I've mean, come up with such witty things. I should do. You do. So the two sides start to face off for this battle, and the battle begins. Grudge match. Yeah. Yeah. Grudge match, battle. Um, so somewhere between the two, probably. 
Um, obviously, Livy's highlighting Aaron's and Brutus um, to make it a bit more to do with literary tradition. It's this idea of heroes on a battlefield, yeah. oiking each other out. Um, very, it's very Homer, mm. you know, in, similar to that. So the two armies start scrapping. Okay. And then... Goes Liv- well. <laughs> well, over to Livy. So... It says, it was a point of honour in those days for the leaders to engage in single combat. So he eagerly accepted the challenge, and they charged with such fury, neither of them thinking of protecting himself, if only he could wound his foe, that each drove his spear at the same moment through the other's shield, and they fell dying from their horses, with spears sticking in them. That is rubbish. That was a bit of... Bad plan. <laughs> it was. But nice that they managed to synchronise the... Yeah, but... What am I going to do? Just peg it at him. Full pelt. Yeah, why not? Take him out. What are you going to do? See this spear? Guess where this is going. Right, okay. So there we go. So that's the end of Brutus. That's the end of Brutus. Aww. And Aaron's. They don't care much. You don't care <laughs> Okay, so... Yeah. They've just skewered each other. Yeah, they've, they've both been kebabbed. Yeah, <laughs> kebab. <laughs> oh, God. So then, obviously, so, that's not the end. They're, really? They're, no, not it's everyone the else end of them two. Everyone else. Not everyone else just legs at each other, <laughs> spears out. Oh, that went well for them. Not really, no. So the details are a little brief, um, but it seems that this combined force of the Tarquini and the VA forces, they managed to force the Romans into a bit of a stalemate. It's not... No one's got the upper hand, yeah. but the two sides aren't necessarily as good at pinning the Romans into a stalemate as each other, as Livy says. So the VA, accustomed to defeat at the hands of the Romans, <laughs> <laughs> it gets was, better. were scattered in flight, but the Tarquinians, a new foe, not only held their ground, but forced the Romans to give way. Right, so half the army's pegged it. Yeah, the VA literally go, oh, we're fighting the Romans. What do we do? We normally surely, just get beaten. Surely they knew that when they declared war on Rome. <laughs> Maybe they were counting on having, like, a stronger sidekick. Yeah, who, who, who we, where are we invading? Rome. Oh, that's fine. No one said about fighting <laughs> Romans. What if, what's going on? James, you're trying to apply your scientist <laughs> logic to this when clearly not the case. So, okay. So, the first day of the battle is inconclusive. Neither side has the upper hand. Yeah, and both sides have got a skewered leader. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> they it's, it's not a great start to any kind of campaign. Um, so, both sides decide to make camp for the night with the intention to carry on the fight the next day and see what happens then. Okay. Mm, but this is where events take a more unusual turn. What? What? What do, you, what do you mean unusual? They took their leaders. Well, <laughs> okay. is, u- usual <laughs> is bizarre. We've had we've had birds telling people what to do, kids with heads on fire, <laughs> wolf prostitute mums. Uh, normal is not normal. Well, okay, then you might be used to this. So the Etruscans, the Tarquini and the VA, mm-hmm. um, they hear a mystery voice coming from the nearby forest of Arcia. No, they don't. <laughs> they literally <laughs> don't. No, they do. <laughs> don't believe it, Livy. So, Livy says... Uh, sorry. The fallen of the Etruscans are one more than those of their foe. The Roman is conqueror. So That's the, what the voice so says. The voice says you've lost. By one man. By one person. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it, it seems that that is enough because... I all like it. Yeah, either believe in the voice is either this long-dead mythical king, Sylvanus, or some equally plausible mystery figure. Did no one go as far as to check it's not just a Roman <laughs> shouting at them? I was going to say that. It's, you know, just someone hiding behind a tree. <laughs> oh, it's worked! And it ran off! You lost by one man. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> and then also they don't go, it's one man. Yeah. We've got a few thousand. Yeah. Yeah, so they believe that this voice is not at all a Roman <laughs> with a rolled up tube. Yeah. Thing. Yep. You have lost. Jesus. Yep. And they simply pack up and go home. So heart, the VA have already liked it. Well, they, they kind of... They retreated. Yeah. Yeah. And now, it looks like to me like they're t- taking any excuse to go home. It's like, oh, I heard a voice. Like, okay, I'm In off. the woods, not the woods. So yeah, they just pack up, go home. 
So the battle won, mm -hmm. nice and quick. Um, that's been won, but before the Romans get too carried away with celebrating, they obviously have to bury Brutus. Once they've removed the spear from him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and as he's kind of taken on this kind of father of the Republic role, everyone is pretty much gutted by the entire thing, so they really miss him, don't the they? They're sad. very upset. Yeah, and the funeral and the mourning end up being a massive deal. It's the full shebang, state honours. Um, like in situ, or do they take him back to They Rome? take him home. Okay. Because um, obviously, parade him through, go, oh, Brutus, blah. But yeah, um, it becomes a really big deal, and there's an unusual example as well. So, Livy says, which was especially noteworthy for the fact that the married women were a whole year in mourning for him because he had been such a determined avenger of violated chastity. Does that mean they refused to sleep with the husband? I thought that, like, yeah. I don't know. Possibly. How how do they? There's a lot of Roman women going. This is the excuse that I'm <laughs> <laughs> waiting for. And a lot of Roman men going, bloody Brutus. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you, Brutus. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a big deal, um, or the perfect excuse. So when, when they inevitably do another census, there's a population drop. <laughs> <laughs> Just for, a massive Just for dip year. for some reason. It was the morning of Brutus. Um... But yeah, so that but that's not the end of Valeria's problems though, because you know he is the sole surviving consul they now. Need a, they need another one. Yeah. Yeah, and although he had returned to Rome as a hero for defeating Superbus, excuse me, the fickle Romans soon started viewing him with suspicion. As What's well. he doing now? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> over to Livy. Funny. He's definitely not called Tarquinius, <laughs> so he, he should be fine. <laughs> so it says he, it was rumored that he was aiming at monarchy. You know, oh, for God's sake. There's only one of him left, so he must want to be king. Um, because the other one's dead. For he had held no election to fill Brutus's place, and he was building a house on the top of the of the Velia, is that right? An impregnable fortress that was being constructed on that high and strong position. But surely if you're building a fortress, that is... He's building a house on a hill. Yeah, but also... Even Rome, if it, Rome, even all if it hill. Is, yeah, even <laughs> if it is a fortress, that is something to benefit Rome as a whole, isn't it? Because strategically... Oh, he's, he's being a king. You can use it to Building a house first. on a so, hill. Also, when they said he didn't hold elections to get him the console... What's the time scale on this? Like immediately, like Bruce is dead. Next day. Why? Why haven't you got ballot papers printed? <laughs> We're still trying to get the spear out of him. He's stuck. <laughs> so yeah, apparently building a house on a hill um, is a sign that you're becoming a king. Okay. Don't know why. Better have another look at that planning permission, Auntie James. <laughs> I... The house you were going to build on Ben Nevis won't go down too well. I mean, no, sadly, I'm not a king. <laughs> I mean, I could be king of this gaggle of idiots. <laughs> so, Valerius, not wanting to be kicked out of Rome like Superbus or Kilatinus for his obvious king plotting, um, he makes the following announcement. The house of Publius Valerius shall be no threat to your freedom. Your Velia shall be safe. I will not only move my house to level ground, but I will move it to the bottom of the hill that you may dwell above the citizen whom you suspect. So the simple so solution... I'm just, I'm just going to build my house somewhere else. Yeah, down the hill, at the bottom of the hill. Is that enough? Well, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> not only does it clear him of suspicion, because, you know, no king would ever want to live at the bottom of the hill, um, but it also earns him the nickname Publicola. Meaning? The friend of the people. They're really easy to please, aren't they? <laughs> and also not at the same time. God, mm. they're so fickle. Yeah, so he's got <laughs> a new name. He's now known as um, Valerius Publicola rather than Publius Valerius. Okay. But he, he, st <laughs> he still needs a co-counsel, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he does. Um, and that's, apparently, this isn't as easy to fix as just moving your house down the hill. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the Romans hold another election for consul, and a man called Lucretius is elected. Cool. Um, well, not really, because as Livy then adds on... But he had not, owing to his great age, strength enough to discharge the duties of his office, and within a few days he died. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Why would you choose someone who was that old? So, I'm sorry. So what the... is the point? <laughs> The, the, the Senate elect the consuls, don't yeah. they? So they elected one and immediately decided they didn't like his name. Yeah. Then they elected 
the oldest man in, in the world, <laughs> and he who who died instantly. Why don't they think these things through? Because they're too busy worrying about where this other guy, where Publicola's building his house. Right, he can't feed himself. He can't go to the toilet by himself anymore. He's a right man for the job. Like how? I, I know you know dates aren't great, but how quickly? Like days later, or like. Well, a he of says weeks. within a few days he died. Jesus Christ! So obviously now Valerius can't share his consulship with a corpse. I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I mean, if he could, then they could have just kept boots on, couldn't they? Yeah, just, just use the spear. To the <laughs> <laughs> put him on the wall. He's just hanging hang around. Him up, hang him up. So anyway, there's another consular election. Okay. And this time a man called Horatius is elected. He's not a million. He's not. And they no, like his, a, and they like a, his so name. He's a toddler. Okay. He's <laughs> not a toddler. <laughs> so he's not old. And he's they, perfectly and they, fine. And they like his name. <laughs> yes. Right, yeah. okay. And Valerius is elected for a second year running. I thought they weren't. I thought they had to like alternate or they... Yeah, no, they're not meant to do that. So they've already they've, gone against their like, tenants they've, of they've their... They've accused him of being a king for... Building his house on the hill, but, but a second election, that's fine. Yeah. What are they doing? Whatever they're doing, they're not doing it very well. But yeah, the, he shouldn't be allowed a second year, but it seems that with the war and the death of Brutus, um, these things are enough for people to overlook this and just have a bit of normality. I mean, <laughs> they've, they've been through numerous consuls in the last year. Yeah, they, so. they set this system up. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, and just to sweeten the deal and ensure that no one kind of brings this up, <laughs> Valerius and um, Horatius passed a few reforms to make everyone's lives easier. Like so they basically buy people off, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. So everything goes back to normal until the Tarquin strikes back. Of course he does. So obviously the issues arising from this are obviously Tarquin stepped up his game a bit from his nonsensical plans to just sneak into the city you know him and his evil schemes but yeah, yeah. Is, <laughs> so has he got any support from the plebs because at no. least at least now no 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 he obviously no, no, was no. hated yeah but this way of invading an army this is much more of a roman way yeah, to do it, things it's, to... A, it's a straight invasion conquest yeah so dealy kind of thing you can't just go like no sex this was the horrible one i'm cool yeah remember? and everyone's like no we remember what you did <laughs> mate yeah look we're still trying to clean up servius off the road did they, did they ever finish building that temple yeah oh they did okay good yeah <laughs> finally so yeah i mean he's stepping up his game these are the wars of independence um it's this kind of rome is this fledgling little thing that everyone's trying to kill. Mm. Um, like we said, he's clearly he's going around different kings saying, ooh, you're next, and yeah. help me get in, back into power. Luckily for the Romans, it's not really worked. No, because like a random voice told them to <laughs> run away. A random and voice did. came from the forest. But yeah, so we see the Roman army. It's not the Roman army that it used to be. I mean, you have none of this nonsense if Romulus was still... Yeah, because they're about. all nutters. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, he's the son of a god, so he'd sort them out. So we're starting to see Rome struggling a bit more, not only in terms of trying to keep itself going, but also in how to rule itself. So do they have any allies at this point, or are they just, no. like, surrounded? Just their little colonies and their little friends, and everyone wants a piece of them. And so at this point, are all, like, the other... I forgot the name of them, like the... States. The, the, the other places around, are they just fully absorbed into Rome now? The little colonies are, but yeah. a lot of the places that um, Rome had almost conquered mm. earlier, they seem to have drifted, some seem to have drifted off right, and okay. come back and we're not really sure what happens with individual states, but what we do know is some are not keen on the existence of this republic. Okay. So they jump on the bandwagon and start invading but also could we say that yes you know rome is small and everything seems to not be going that but great feisty but yeah but the fact that it does obviously work and it goes on to last for so long and become so powerful is that i'm, I'm trying to think of what i'm trying to say but is that basically this is something that they've got to get through and by getting through it it kind of makes yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look better. It, it's the it's like the thing they can look back on and go well look we struggled but we got through it because we're yeah, so amazing it's and it made fire, so great so, yeah, yeah the, the trials and brilliant. tribulations of rome it's, it's almost like the 12 labors of rome they've got to get through 
kings and then Tarquins and then ghost voices it's from the forest. It's kind of like self-aggrandizing, Building castles isn't in it? the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it is. It's giving them, again, more of a backstory, which is what Libby's doing. Um, but again, we've got to point out there are inconsistencies, like the fact that Valerius is able to become consul twice, mm. which he shouldn't do, that's naughty. Also, the Romans' shocking inability to like the person they've elected for more than 10 minutes. Yeah. It seems they kind of chop and change the rules very much to suit them, as opposed to sticking to them kind of hard and fast, doesn't it? But again, if this is a new system, there is going to be a degree of, you know, that thing we thought would work, it's not working. So again, same fears, tyranny and the return of Superbus um, are coming through right throughout these wars of independence. So there you have it, our brief overview of the Battle of Silvia Arcia. Thank you very much for listening. We hope this has been helpful. Leave us a comment below, and until next time, goodbye. Bye. Bye.